Look at these lovely lumps of wood. Douglas fir, six inches thick, ten inches wide. I bought these back in the summer and they've been drying out since then. I painted the ends with PVA to try to stop them splitting and perhaps it's worked because they don't seem to have any serious splits at all. Fast forward a few months and I'm ready to use them. They're for the fellows on the big wheel, the wooden pieces that go round the outside. They should give lots of weight at the outer edge of the wheel, which will add to the momentum, because momentum is another way of saying weight in motion. So once this wheel is spinning, it will try to keep spinning. There will be one wooden fellow for each pair of spokes and long bolts will go right through from one side to the other, trapping the fellow in a spoke sandwich. Obviously, they're not the right size or shape yet and cutting them accurately is going to be the challenge because accuracy is critical. Imagine if the joints between them were at the wrong angle or if they were even a little bit too long or too short, I'd end up with a horrible mess. But I wouldn't even know until the last one goes in. But I have a plan. I'm using this drawing scaled up to full size to give me the exact size and shape of each one, I hope. I used my wonderful CNC router to cut a template out of thin plywood. It's just a router being told where to go by a computer, but like my CNC plasma cutter, it's a marvellous machine. If all goes well, this should be exactly the right size. I just have to copy it accurately in the timber 10 times. Actually, I'd love to cut 10 of these templates out just to be sure they'll fit, but I don't have the plywood for that. I can also mark where the bolt holes are for the spokes, so they're in the right place, and for the holes where the steel rims will go. The steel rims, made up of 60 pieces of steel in fact, will, I hope, hold the ends of the timber pieces together and also stop the wheel exploding as it goes round. Oh no, I hope it works. I know that usually a wooden wheel would have a steel rim right round the outside, ideally put on hot to squeeze the fellows together as it cools. But I can't do that. You see, I want to put a huge flat belt on the outside of the wheel to drive it. And that means I need to round over the outside of the wood. That means cutting a crown into the wood all the way round, because that should keep the belt on, I hope. And that's going to be tricky enough to do, even without steel rings in the way. So that's why I'm going with rims on the sides of the fellows. I hope that's going to work. So, more challenges to come on this project. But before I can worry about any of that, I need to cut the fellows out of the ten big lumps of wood. Now, how are you going to do that, Tim? I hear you ask. No ordinary saw could cut through timber that big, surely. Well, luckily, I have a mighty band saw, which I've hardly used yet. Back in the summer, Will helped reposition it 
very heavy. And if you remember, I put in a line shaft so the old engine can still drive it even though it's moved 15 feet. So I was hoping I just start it up and away we go. But there's a snag. <laughs> now that the bandsaw is connected, the line shaft vibrates a lot. And the line shafts connected to the framework. And the framework is connected to the roofing sheets and the roofing sheets bounce up and down like crazy. So now the whole shed rumbles and rattles like the apocalypse has arrived and the sky is falling down on our heads. So I've decided I'm going to have to move the line shaft from up by the roof to down on the floor where I hope it will vibrate less and maybe the apocalypse will be postponed another couple of weeks at least. Hope. Nothing else on the giant wheel can happen until then so wish me luck. <laughs> 